In this video, we're going to look at how slicers compare to filters pane in Power BI. We're going to talk about how each of them work, what the benefits and the limitations are for each one, and how I prefer to use them and weave them into my reports. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So one of Power BI's standout features is the ability to interact with your visuals and filter what your charts are showing. So for example, here we have a simple Power BI report with three separate charts. If you select beverages in this chart, for example, the rest of the visuals will react to this filtering or highlighting to only show the context that you've selected. Beyond interacting with visuals like this, another way that you can give your users the ability to filter their data is through slicers. You can add one by simply selecting and adding a slicer visual into the page here and then just adding the field that you want to use to filter. So in this case, as an example, let's just put the category name here. Now, when you select values here in your slicer, it will filter all your visuals in the page. Power BI provides you with many different options to customize slicers, like for example, making it into a dropdown or adding a search bar. I actually covered it in more detail in another video, so check out that one if you want to learn a bit more about it. The second option that is available to you when filtering data in your page is the filter pane, which is this pane that you can see on the right hand corner. It's visible to you and your users by default. However, you can choose to hide it if you want to by clicking the button up here. And if you want to use the filter panes to filter your report, you simply drag the field that you want to filter in the filters pane, filter what you want to filter, and you're pretty much ready to go. You'll notice that we put this filter on this uh, filter on all pages scope, which affects everything in our pages or everything in our reports, but there are three different scopes that you can choose from. So this one obviously applies this filter across all the reports or all the, all the pages in your report. So you will see that it, it, it will get applied in the different pages here and page three as well. And you'll notice that you have another one here filters on this page, which means that any filters you apply and drag into that uh, well will only affect the current page that you're on and then the next level is on a visual level so if you select a specific visual for example you will have another set of options here which if you filter and put them into this well will only affect this specific visual that you've selected so now that you know what these options are let's talk about what the benefits and limitations are of each of these options the first and most obvious limitation of a slicer is that it requires a visual on your page. This means that it's another visual that the report needs to render, which takes up space from your report. But granted, you can minimize this by changing it into a drop down menu instead, but it's still space that could be used to visualize charts instead. Now with the filter pane, it has a dedicated home outside of the page that you can have as many fields as you want without taking any space in your report. A key benefit of using slicers though is its flexibility in choosing how it affects other visuals. If we select a value here, we want to, for example, affect everything in this page except the sales by category, because this sales by category, when we select a category here in our slicer, will only always show one value. So in this case, we don't want this to be affected by our slicer filter here. So to do that, we can simply customize how it affects other visuals by going into format, enabling edit interactions, make sure that you have selected the slicer visual in your page and it will show you how it will affect other visuals in your page um, by these little icons on the top right of each one so you will see that when we select a value here it filters 
this uh, this visual and we don't want that so we will just simply hit none so now if we disable edit interactions and select beverages again you'll see that this slicer affects certain parts like this visual and this line chart but it doesn't affect uh, this chart at all now with the filter pane you can only control it on one visual at a time as we are obviously limited by what scopes are available to us this limitation in flexibility is also apparent when you're controlling filters that span across multiple pages so in this report you know you saw already but I've created multiple pages it's the exact same report but I just added them for testing purposes and I've also changed their color slightly so we can distinguish between each of the pages so let's say you want and we've already demonstrated it you want to apply a filter across all these pages now with the filter pane you can simply just drag and have the filter in this scope to say filter on all pages so if we just want to see beverages across all these three pages you can do that and you'll see it is applied on all three of them but what if you wanted a bit more control into uh, this options for example you want the filter to apply on only page one and two but not page three now there's not an easy way to do it with the filter pane because it means that for you to do that, you need to create a separate filter, a page filter on page one and page two, but not page three. So an option that you have is to use slicers, which uh, has an option called sync slicers, which you can bring up by going to view and sync slicers. It will bring up a pane on the right hand side, which if you select a slicer visual in your page, it will give you a list of all the pages available to you in this report, along with some control elements like showing them in specific pages or syncing what you've selected in certain pages across multiple pages. So for example, if we want to show the filter uh, visual in our page two and page three, we can simply tick the eye icon next to those pages and you'll see that on page two and page three, it will sync what we've selected on all of the pages. So it will be the same across, even if we change it, for example, condiments, you'll see that it will be preserved on each page. And you can also control if they are synced to each other. So in this example that we said, if you wanted the page one and page two to have uh, their category name synced or this, the, what you've selected synced, but not page three, you can simply disable that here in this selection. So you'll now see here if we change the selection to, let's say seafood on page one, we have that selected on page two you'll see seafood is selected, but page three using the same slicer will be different because it's not synced to the first and second pages as we've configured. Another disadvantage that we have with the filter panes is that although it doesn't take up report space when you're showing your Power BI dashboards, it does take up screen space if it's not hidden. So for example, if you have a report that you're visualizing in full screen, if you have the filter pane expanded, it minimizes the report page that you are showing, but keeping the same aspect ratio of it, effectively making it uh, smaller. So all in all, both the filter pane and slicers have their own strengths. However, for me personally, I prefer to hide the filter pane altogether and use these slicers to give my users filtering capabilities as it's a lot more flexible to customize. And from my experience, my users are more receptive to filtering elements like navigation or slicers when they're on the page itself. Although I hide the filter pane, that doesn't mean I don't use them though. I use the filter pane to filter out any values that I don't want my users to see in the report, like blank values, as an example. Slicers do tend to take space in your reports, and I've actually created a few videos in the past in order to get over this limitation, like making slicers and putting them into a pop-up menu, or even creating a separate filter page, which allows you to save space and centralize all your filters in one 
page. And that's really it for this video. I hope you're now a little bit more familiar with the slicers and the filters pane and when to use one or the other. Thanks for watching as usual. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you on the next one. Bye-bye.